host Boji once again from Boji Farms. Are you new to our channel? Do not forget to subscribe. And also, do not forget to hit the notification bell to alert you in case one of our videos is loading. Our topic of discussion today is about parasites. On every farm, especially in Africa, actually most farms, we struggle with parasites. Parasites come in form of external and internal. But this time around, we are going to talk about external parasites. What are these external parasites? Are you aware as a human being you're a parasite to a goat? But leaving that alone, some of the parasites are meaning the external parasites are ticks, we have fleas, we have mites, nebigen da mukowe, yongabinji, there are quite a number of them. So as a farmer on your farm, how do you deal with parasites or how do you spray against parasites? There are quite a number of ways how you can do away or how you can minimize or you can reduce the number of parasites on your farm. But one way most of us are familiar with is spraying our goats against parasites. But a number of us, we don't know how. We always blunder. We are having drug resistance, tick resistance on our farms. We have had a scenario where somebody sprays on a daily basis and the ticks keep smiling at us. They have not died. They are still on the goat's body. We have had scenarios where somebody is faced with challenges of fleas. They are quite many, but they don't know what to do. They don't know what kind of drug to use. They don't know what kind of a carousel to use. They don't know how to go about it. So if you're one farmer faced with this kind of challenge, this video is right for you. Please don't skip it for anything. Just stay tuned and let's learn together. These parasites cause a number of infections or a number of diseases. For example, at water, there is manje. They cause an irritation, that itching. Like you find a goat which has like dandruff on its skin. That is an infection called manje. This is caused usually by uh, parasites on, our, on the goat's skin. The parasites I'm talking about on your farm, they don't come alone. They carry or they transmit a number of infections or diseases. For example, hot water, manje. Manje, this is an infection that uh, happens on the goat skin. If you realize on your farm that you have these kind of parasites I've talked about, or if you suspect that these parasites are on your farm, please don't die in silence. Invite a professional, invite a qualified veterinary official to your farm. This veterinary official will help you analyze and tell you which kind of parasite is this, what is the magnitude of its infection to your farm, what kind of a caricide are you going to use on your farm. And here is where we get it wrong as farmers. We usually take things in our own hands. We usually assume that everything we come across will solve our dilemma on the farms. And some of us, what we have resorted to doing is go to these uh, shops in downtown in Kampala. We get pesticides like Dudacelemectin. People are using Dudacelemectin to spread their goats against uh, ticks. But this is wrong farmers. Every time you use something that is meant to be used on an animal skin, you bring an irritation. That's why on most farms that are using Dudacelemectin, we are having so many eye infections on our goats because this Dudacelemectin brings that irritation on the goat's eyes. So always use a qualified veterinary official to guide you. Don't cut corners. Don't fear to pay an extra cost to bring that vet on your farm. This vet is going to be so crucial in helping you solve the challenge of parasites you are facing. Actually, when these vets come in, they help you assess the situation on ground. They help you assess which type of uh, parasites are you facing, what is the magnitude, what kind of interventions can you, can you use on that particular farm. Usually, when we take things in our own hands, we end up burning our own fingers. When we take things in our own hands, we use a lot of money, we make losses, and we also bring a lot of poison to our goats 
unknowingly. Because all we want as a farmer, all we want as a farmer is to have an immediate solution to anything that is causing an irritation to our goats. But this is wrong. Involve these guys, do not cut corners. Still, when should one spray against these external parasites? After you have brought in a vet and they have advised you, they will always inform you when and how you're supposed to do it. But one thing I've picked from all the vets that have come to our farm, they always advise, never spray your goats when it is too windy. When it's too windy, most of the curry size does not do what it's supposed to be because it flies off. And also avoid spraying your goats when it is about to rain or when it has just stopped raining. Why? The curry side will be diluted off the goat's body and will have done nothing. Are we together farmers? The best time for you to spray your goats, some of you may be wondering, I've said do not spray your goats when it's about to rain, do not spray your goats when it has just stopped raining, do not spray your goats when it is too windy because this curry side is going to fly off your goats and will not benefit you as a farmer and also the goats. So the best time for you to spray your goats would be the sunny weather because the goats will be able to dry. And remember, when you spray this curry side, it is cold as well. While doing this exercise of spraying against parasites on your farm, remember to give protection gears to these boys. These curry sides are dangerous to human beings. Do not let them uh, spray the goats barefooted. Do not let them weigh, uh, spray the goats when they don't have masks, when they don't have gloves. Some of the farms I've been to, because uh, water is a challenge or water, a water source is quite far, some of the farmers, what the mistakes they do, they put uh, the crushes or the areas where they are going to spray from their goats near the water source. This is a very bad practice, dear farmers. Why is it a very bad practice? Why is it a very bad practice? Because usually this acaricide is a poison. And when you spray near a water source, this acaricide usually seeps through and it goes back to the water source. It means if it is the same water source where your goats are drinking from, it means you are serving the poison to your goats directly. Minimally, put it at least uh, 100 meters away to avoid this kind of water pollution on your farm. If you are to spray and everything is done, please discard off empty bottles. I've been on farms where you see empty bottles have been washed and they are being used as cans to collect milk from other farms. Count the number of goats and also calculate how many liters of this acaricide, diluted uh, acaricide, will I use to spray the goats so that you don't have any remaining acaricide. The best you can do if you have excess acaricide, use it and spray in the kraals, use it and spray in the goat pens. A vet will come and do, do his work on the farm. He advises, farmer A, eh, please mix this acaricide this way. But because we want faster solutions and we see our animals are struggling, you end up mixing twice the drug than what the vet advised you to what? For example, a vet comes on the farm, he advises you and tells you, you know what, Grace, you're going to mix 20 mils of this acaricide in 20 liters of water. You end up mixing 40 mils of that acaricide in the 20 liters of water. Farmers, this is wrong. We are creating drug resistance on our farms. If we are to fight this war of external parasites, on our farms, let's not take things in our own hands. Let's involve these veterinary officials. But I want to also maybe in Tibino. They learned these things to come and help us as farmers. I'm a social worker, I can't be dispersing drugs because I'm not qualified in that area. Involve the vets in this kind of situation to avoid drug resistance. That's all I had for you today. We are still at Boji Farms. Please do not forget to subscribe. And also do not forget to hit that uh, notification bell to notify you when our next video is loading. Bye-bye.